peserta projek Rintis Flip Learning. Profesor Madia Dr. Rahana Muhammad Maidin. I've been teaching in UKM since 1995, uh, and so for the last plus or minus 17 years, this is this is what I've been doing: one hour lecture plus two hours tutorial, with an addition of individual consultations and emails. But the problem that I've encountered with this kind of an approach, what, what I call the traditional one plus two method, are these four components. The first is attendance. We all have this experience of. You know, you've got a class at 12 o'clock, students are coming from another building, and they come in 15 minutes late. Attendance is a problem. And then there's another problem. They're involved in co-curricular activities. You know, they, they give you a letter of release. Can I be, please be released from this particular lecture? Because I'm involved in something else, and I'll be in Trungganu, for instance. And what are you going to do? You know? So they've missed. Uh, um, the attendance is not there. And the attention span. They come in about 10 minutes late. They take time to kind of register what's going on, by which time you've already stopped at your lecture. You know, so their, their attention span is also problematic. Now, because of all these other issues, the engagement in class is also problematic. You know, you've, you've uh, set up certain activities, they're not able to participate. And also the other issue is the contact hours. Three hours, that's all I get to see them. So anyway, one of the things that we did because of this issue, I spoke to Prof Amin as well about this, one of the things that we did was we wanted to do an, an intervention type strategy yeah, by incorporating flipped learning in the teaching and I got a PTS grant for this uh, titled Flip Classroom, uh, Flipping the Classroom Increasing Cognitive Development Among Graduate Students Using iFolio. So the component of the innovation is this, if you like. right? So previously we had lecture plus tutorial plus edition. Now, instead of a lecture, we're changing the lecture with the input. So you've got the input instead of the lecture. So what do you mean by input? Input can come in forms of uh, lecture notes. It can come in the forms of videos. I'll go through this in a minute. Then we have the output. So what do you mean by the output? The output is what students produce. right? Again, I'll go through this in a minute. And then you have the F2F or face-to-face -face interaction. This is the classroom, the three hour previous classroom component, that's the last component. So if you like, with the flip element, you've gotten a lot more from the students uh, before coming to class. This is the hope at least. So the examples of the input that I have produced include self-recorded PowerPoint lecture notes using screencast-o-matic. This is the one of the only tools that I have. I'm not very IT savvy, you know, but the few tools that I do have, I use it to the fullest. You know, so one of which is to, to record my lecture. Uh, I, I went for a course with PPA for a short course, how to use Screencast-O-Matic. They taught me how to do it, so I've been using that. The other one is also to use Screencast-O-Matic, but instead of me giving a lecture, I have a PDF book. that I, It's a textbook for the students. For instance, comparative literature, there's a textbook. So I will guide the students in terms of the reading of this book. You know, I go through it using Screencast-O-Matic. So instead of me being in class, I record how to read this book, focusing on specific quotations, talk to them about it, then they can go back and, and watch the video many times. That's strategy number two for the input. Strate strategy number three for the input is to use whatever that's available online, specifically on YouTube. I call it the Uncle YouTube resource, you know? So you've got lectures, you've got interviews, and this, this, is, uh, it, this is a wealth of resources we, we ought to kind of tap into. And finally, um, to kind of throw the students into the deep end to find out if they can discover things on their own, um, the higher order thinking skills, would be by giving them certain tasks, give them certain things to read or certain things to do, and ask them to discover it on their own. Then the examples of the output includes a one minute response, where students are given one minute to respond to a particular task and they upload it on, on iFolio. This is one sample. The other one will be short video responses. You know, students will use screencast themselves, record their responses, and upload it on iFolio. And also using wall wishes such as Padlet.com, and students kind of just double click on the screen, leave a short message of what they thought the task was about, respond to the task. And I also requested that my students uh, reflect on the kind of teaching that, that we've been doing, the two semesters of, of um, flipped learning. So they've got reflective journals where they reflect on the kind of learning that they have done. 
And finally, um, which, which I felt was the most important innovation in my teaching, because with graduate students, we've got a lot of seminars, and they're supposed to present seminars. That's part of their uh, assessment. So instead of them coming to class and present their seminar, I gave them the opportunity to record their seminar at their leisure at home, upload it, and then come to class and review it. And this is also assessed. You know? What I find most engaging with this style is my students are, uh, you know, they range from full-time teachers who come from um, Malacca, who come from parts of Johor. They travel to come to class to see me, all right, for the contact hours. As well as I have full-time 20-year-olds who stay up all night. You know, you, you know them, right? They stay up all night, but they're not very engaged in class, but they are very intelligent. So I'm tapping into their, their interest. When are they most uh, at ease, it's usually at night. So I tell them, okay, fine, if it's that when you study, record your seminar at, at night, upload it. I will assess it at our time. So I find that this is an, another important um, uh, experiment with them. So during the face-to-face -face activities, these are some of the things that we do. We have the glass bowl technique. Um, what, what that means is we put their uh, performance or their presentation on stage, everyone gets to view it, then we have peer feedback, you have pair group discussions, you've got role playing, you've got also feedback on Padlet. So the final thoughts would be this. I've seen marked improvement uh, in terms of these areas. Learning, especially, how they have learned and how much they have learned, especially through reflective journals. Their participation, you know, even though they come in slightly late, they are engaged in class because they've done the task, they've uploaded the task. And their attitude, their overall attitude, you know, where previously I would get students sitting in front and yawning away because they're so tired, now I don't get that kind of an attitude issue because they've done the work. They know when they come in, they're quite happy. They've done the task and they're, they're happy to show off what they've learned. And the, I think the most important thing that I have learned this last two semesters is the paradigm shift in terms of my own approach to my teaching. When we talk about contact hours, I, I'm more flexible with contact hours now. We don't have a three-hour class, you know? We tend to have between an hour and an hour and a half. Even though on paper it says 9 to 12, we'll probably be done by, by say, 10 or 10.30. Um, and also the fact that I know I'm utilizing their pre- and post-class hours. It's not just the three hours in class that I'm with them. I'm with them before class. I'm with them after class through the blended approach, you know? As well as I get to see the students with more engagement before and after class. So they spend less time in class, but they produce more. This is one of the things that I found. And my task, you know, I see my task not as a lecturer where I stand in front and I give a lecture. My task is more to facilitate and to scaffold the learning used by the students. Wherever relevant, using whatever re uh, relevant resources, I scaffold their learning. And I correspond with my student with whatever platform necessary. You know, we're on WhatsApp, we're chit-chatting away, and they can ask me questions. Dr. Rana, is that right? Can I do it this way? And everyone gets to participate. And I love the fact that I'm able to interact with my student better. Just, just a final thought. Um, I think, you know, Robert Frost said this. Robert Frost is an American poet. This is his poem called The Road Less Travel. It's one of my favorite lines, you know. I, I love this line because I think this encapsulates the kind of approach UKM generally, myself personally, we are trying to do. You know, it says here, I would like to read this. Two roads diverge in a wood, and I, I took the, the road less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And I think that's so true. You know, we, that's, that's in a sense what innovation is. We take the road less travel. And in taking that, we have to have the courage. You know, we are afraid, we have to have the courage. And in so doing, inshallah, things will fall, uh, come out for us, you know. And, and if we, our intention is good, it will, it will materialize in what we do. And with that, I thank you so much. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> Majlis mempersilakan yang membahagi Profesor Pengarah 
uh, Pusat Pengajaran dan Teknologi Pembelajaran untuk menyampaikan cedermata kenang-kenangan kepada yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Nak Chancellor atas kesudian melancarkan kempen sesi pembelajaran terhadap Majlis mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih dan setinggi-tinggi penghargaan atas kesudian menghadiri majlis ini. Sekian, wabillahi taufiq walidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.